why don't you tell us a little something about Rise first, and then we'll get into um, what has driven this increase in, in hate crimes uh, and all the issues around it. Yeah, absolutely. And Sam, thank you so much for, for having me and, and covering this topic. RISE is a civil rights accelerator. What that means is we work with grassroots organizers from all across America and the world and from different issues and help them pen their own civil rights into existence. So think of it as a Y combinator for civil rights instead of startups that focus on, well, business. What we do is work on startups that focus on civil rights. And our latest work focuses on the anti-Asian discrimination that has been going on in our country. Um, you uh, received some, I guess, uh, uh, you, you recorded a couple of Instagrams that went viral yes. uh, in reaction to a, uh, a hate crime that you, um, uh, that you, you felt was not getting the proper coverage. I mean, this has been um, largely the story uh, in many respects, I mean, or, or, or maybe I guess the, the, a knock on story, but let's just start about wh why, what do you think has driven the increase in uh, um, anti-Asian uh, hate in this uh, in this country? As the data shows, undoubtedly, there has been a rise within the pandemic in crimes against the API community or Asian American Pacific Islander community. However, this rise of violence has been built upon centuries of violence against the AAPIs. And if we start from the very beginning, it will help us understand why what's happening now is happening. There has been over, again, centuries, an intentional systematic effort to erase the AAPI experience. What I mean by that is Look at our systems, our structures that tell stories, right? So uh, obviously that's the media. There's also Hollywood. There's also schools, the story of our history, right? And there's also our government, the story of the people, right? And in each of these different categories, at every single level, APIs have been consistently omitted. In 2009, there was a study that showed that in some federal agencies, APIs are not even included within the definition of racial minorities. Our education system does not teach our history from our grief to our contributions. In Hollywood, yellow face, right, is a rampant thing if it even includes a story or a character about AAPIs at all. And finally, in the media, our stories are barely covered. And if they are, it is often done with let's say, less rigor uh, in, in the responsible journalism that needs to happen around this issue, around just our people in general. And on top of that, it's not only journalists that are fighting for it, it's also newsrooms, right? The people who make decisions, the people behind the camera, right? There are so many levels to the decision-making process before what actually shows up on a camera and what is actually being presented to a wider audience. And omission, Silence is violence. The way that you can oppress people is divide and conquer, and on top of that, erasing, erasing their humanity. And that is what the API community fundamentally faces as a challenge. That is why we are in where we are right now. Systematic omission. I, I mean, I, um, uh, the, uh, the number of sort of laws that were passed a um, uh, hundred years, hundred years plus uh, that um, uh, to, to curb immigration, many of them were yes. uh, influenced by um, a discrimination, uh, racism against the AAPI people. And um, I mean, I wonder, give me your sense because, um, it, you know, clearly we have this foundation of, of, uh, of, AAPI racism in this country. Um, and much of it has been at least submerged from our consciousness in the way that we submerge a lot of uh, the racist um, uh, ha history of this country. But um, obviously on some level, overshadowed by the history of, of slavery in this country and the, and the history of genocide uh, in this country. Um, where, you know, 
where, how does that re regain some type of prominence within the, the context of that? I mean, how is that navigated? Um, where obviously you want to both respect the, um, the oppression of other people, uh, but um, I mean, is it, is it a zero sum game? Is it, how does it, uh, tell me how that, that, that navigates th through those, um, those obstacles. Justice simply is not zero sum and it's not a binary. There are people of all different communities and in order for us to move together as a country, to live up to the promise of this nation, to live up to the creed of this country, it is important that we recognize all members of this country. Okay? So when we're talking about dialogue, when we're talking about critically engaging in anti-racism work, we must include all communities, and that includes the Asian American Pacific Islander community. When you look back on the on the history of um, of, of, of racism uh, in this country, um, uh, specifically dealing with uh, AAPI folks, um, where where does are, are there moments that stick out as sort of uh, fundamental uh, foundational um, moments, or has it been just a a a series of ongoing um, uh, racist? I mean. Were, were there are there landmarks, if you will, or milestones in terms of the racism in this country? Some that were institutional, some were that were 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 more societal. Yes, yes, and there are so many people who don't know. They don't know our history, right? They don't know that what it means to be defined as an American. The fact that you can be born in American land and become. American because of that was defined because of an Asian American Supreme Court case, right? People don't know that one of the first acts of racial exclusion was the Chinese Exclusion Act, literally trying to exclude Chinese women, Asian women, right? This history needs to be taught. People don't know not only that one of the largest lynchings in US history happened to, to Asian Americans. People don't know that, right? People don't know about the internment camps. And they don't know about our collective power, right? That the Asian community has worked with the black community before, that we together have been hand in hand working to build this fabric of justice, bending that moral arc of the universe. All of that has been erased, right? And so that's what you do when you don't want people to know their power. You erase their heritage, you erase their history. When I posted that video, there was, no dialogue about it right, in the right. mainstream media. And that video was met with, it was like fire meets gasoline. Right? And 11.4 million people posted in response to it on TikTok. Uh, on Instagram, it received 3 million views instantly overnight. And on the next business day, the White House press corps asked if President Biden had seen my video. From that moment, two President Biden's recent primetime speech addressing this, right? I have seen thousands and thousands of APIs say both publicly and privately to me, thank you so much for speaking that, for speaking us into the consciousness of this country. I felt like before I could not speak up. I felt like before my grief did not matter, that I wasn't valid and that I just had to stay silent. And to be able to just acknowledge, that is the first step to healing, acknowledging that there is a problem, acknowledging that this group of people need to be visible and need to be heard and seen. And that that is what we're asking for. Hi, I'm Sam Cedar. You can watch the rest of this interview and more on our Peacock show, which streams at 5 p.m. weekdays on The Choice from Peacock TV.